So in this example, we have a box uh, that is modelled as a rectangular lamina. It has a mass of 4 kilos, a width of 0.8 metres and a height of 0.3 metres. It's being acted on uh, by a force of P-Newtons at 60 degrees to the vertical in the top left-hand corner. The coefficient of friction between the box and the surface is 0.6. So the first thing we want to do is label all the other forces that we're aware of onto our diagram. So we're going to have the normal reaction force and we're also going to have the weight acting vertically downwards, which is 4G. Because in contact with the surface, we've got the frictional force as well, acting to the left. And we can break the P Newton force up into its components. So this will be P sine 60, and we'll have P cosine 60. OK, so for part A, the first thing I'm going to do is resolve vertically, taking upwards as positive. Now we have R plus the component of the P Newton force, so P cosine 60. Take away the weight, which is 4G, is equal to 0. So R is going to be equal to 4G take away P cosine 60. Now we know that friction must be equal to mu times R, so 0 0.6 times by R which is equal to 0 0.6 times 4g take away p cosine 60. So that's my friction. Now if I resolve horizontally, taking to the right as positive, we'll have p sine 60 take away the friction, which is 0 0.6 times 4g take away p cosine 60. And that's going to be equal to zero when it is on the point of moving. Okay. So this will allow me to work out P. So if I multiply out the bracket, we're going to have P sine 60 take away 0 0.6 times 4G, uh, which is 2.4G, plus 0 0.6P cosine 60 is equal to zero. Now, if I add the 2.4g to the other side, factor out the p and divide through by the bracket, I'm going to get p is equal to 2.4g divided by sine of 60 plus 0.6 cosine 60. So 2.4 times 9.8 divided by sine of 60 plus 0.6 times cosine of 60. And that gives me 20.171, etc. So the range values of P such that the box will begin to slide across the ground, P would be greater than 20.2 to three significant figures. So let's see if it topples first. So for part B, I'm going to look at when it's toppling. Now it's going to topple about this corner, let's call that point A, and that will be the point that is in contact with the surface, so then the normal reaction force is now there. So I'm going to take moments about point A, and if it's on the point of toppling then that's going to be equal to zero. So we are 0.4 metres away from the 4G force, which is going in an anti-clockwise motion. So that will be 0.4 times 4G. We are 0.3 metres away from the horizontal component of the P Newton force, uh, which is P sine 60. So that's going to be in a, in a clockwise motion. So take away 0.3 times P sine 60. And we're 0.8 metres away from the P cosine 60 force, and that's going in a clockwise motion as well. So take away 0.8 times P cosine 60, that's going to be equal to zero. So I've got the 0.4 times 4G, which is going to be 1.6G. 
and I'm going to move both those terms over to the other side, factor out the p, divide through by the bracket. So I'll be dividing through by 0.3 sine 60 plus 0.8 cosine 60. So 1.6 times 9.8, divide that by 0.3 times sine of 60 plus 0.8 times cosine of 60. And we get 23.764, etc. So P would have to be greater than 23.8 to three significant figures. So what this is telling me is that as P has increased, um, it all starts sliding when it gets past 20.2 newtons. So then it's sliding. But once it gets past 23.8 newtons, as P has increased, then the block, the block or the box will start to topple.